coming, everyone. My name is David Weam. I also work with the Department of Health and do plan review with Brian um, for these projects. And it's a little bit related why I'm here to talk to you today about when you need to involve an engineer on a, on a project. So today we'll talk about uh, types of water systems, the Department of Health plan review, um, engineer involvement when that's needed, a little bit about the benefits you get when you do hire an engineer on there, and uh, we'll discuss a little bit more about plan review, some things you should know and be aware of. So the types of water systems out there, there's both uh, non-community and community. The non-community are the um, more of restaurants, uh, campgrounds, things like that, community or obviously municipalities. And um, since we're talking about when cities need to hire an engineer, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the community side and cities in general. And because this is rural water, it's uh, in general the more smaller municipalities that uh, we'll be talking about today. If you have questions on um, something else that you don't feel I've covered, please come talk to me afterwards and I'll uh, explain things as best I can for your particular situation. So uh, about plan review, all public water systems when doing a water main or like water construction are required to submit plans and it is the responsibility of the owner or in this case you could read that as city to submit the plans to the Department of Health. They may hire an engineer that will do that for them um, and it may be the engineer who you know they delegate that responsibility but in the end it's the city's responsibility and if plans aren't submitted the Department of Health will come will go after the city and say hey you needed to do this and if it you know becomes that big of an issue, it may involve a administrative penalty that will be put on the city by the Department of Health. <coughs> and the plans need to be both submitted and approved before you start constructing. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Also, you know, you can't just submit it and then go, okay, let's start digging. But you got to have it approved first and then you're good to go. So why is plan review required? Well, it's the law. As Brian indicated earlier, 47, Minnesota Rules, Chapter 4720.0010 talks about plan review and how any material construction or alteration of a public water system is required to have the Commissioner of Health or um, its agents, as me and Brian perform that role, to do plan review on that project. Um, it has some, I mean, more importantly, it hopefully identifies any deficiencies or anything that could cause you problems down the road and takes care of it up front. And hopefully will save you time and money by doing that. And we also look at standards that are um, a little bit about water safety about operator safety, it, you know, we don't cover everything OSHA requires, but especially when it comes to chemical handling or how they're stored or how things are built, we'll look into operator safety as well. So when are engineers required? Well, the reason I'm talking about plan review is engineer, an engineering signature is required um, before we approve plans for almost every single water construction project that we're required to see. And I'll go through those in a little bit. Um, biggest reason, it's about the public health. It's, we're dealing with a public water supply and as the health department, our biggest concern is public health and an engineer has that specific training and knowledge that has been certified by the board of architects, engineers, and land surveyors, that they are certified to do this kind of work. And it, when you're dealing with public health, you have to be very careful with what you do. Um, as many of you probably know in Virginia where that chemical spill happened, that's the type of thing we're trying to avoid at all costs. We don't want to have people you know, trusting this water for years. What you do is very important, but 
as soon as something goes wrong because they don't think about it, they'll get very out of control if, uh, if there's a problem down the road. So uh, about those projects, engineers, we require them to sign, to uh, design and sign off on projects for water main construction, water treatment, uh, that's both renovation and new installations, water storage, that's both construction and um, if you're coating any sur uh, storage surface that the water is going to come in contact with, we, we need to see that, um, any well house, pump house, booster station, and well construction. The only project that we don't require an engineer to sign for when we review is chemical feed. If it's a very simple, you know, we're changing over to bleach from gas chlorine, something like that, we don't require an engineer to get involved, but we still need plans submitted and we'd take them from the person doing the work, the um, chemical supplier or um, manufacturer there of the equipment that's being put in. So uh, I understand that many of you probably think you got this engineering stuff down pretty well. You know the basics. You got that covered and maybe you don't think you need an engineer or there's uh, some of you that are a little more advanced in your engineering <laughs> skills and abilities or but uh, we're not at the Department of Health we're not the appropriate people to determine how how skilled you are at doing that um, that's what the board of architects and engineers and land surveyors is out there for that's their function now I know some of you have probably run engineers that comp over, com overly complicate matters and that's been frustrating for you but they do think in a very detailed and step-by-step -step manner which is advantageous to the work they do. Or I know um, some people have a lower opinion of some of the engineers they've worked with in the past. <laughs> or perhaps uh, They've uh, had an engineer pushing them to do something that just didn't quite make sense and wasn't explaining it to them. But there are a lot of benefits an engineer gives you. Uh, choose your engineer wisely. There's a lot of skilled engineers here today and uh, yesterday and I'll be here around tomorrow that do a good job. Make sure you establish a relationship that of trust. You have to know that you can trust them to work with them. Make sure that, you know, if they're asking you to do something that sounds really overblown or off base, you know, ask somebody else, does this make sense? If you need to ask your um, district M MDH guy, hey, hey, they're saying we need to do this. Does that, you know, is that typical? They see a lot of stuff, maybe they'll say, yeah, that's, that's very common, or maybe they'll say, yeah, that sounds a little goofy, let's look into that a little bit. But, you know, choose your engineer wisely. You can talk, talk to many of them, see, see who you like to work with, who works well with you. I mean, you can't, uh, you have to be good to work with them as well. Um, the biggest benefit they provide you is their technical expertise. They're very skilled at what they do, they're very focused at what they do. Um, a lot of water operators, especially in small systems, you have a very, very broad knowledge, you're very skilled at what you do too. And then ideally the engineer will come along inside, alongside and complement your broad base of knowledge and specific knowledge of the area you work in and can pr provide their very focused and specific knowledge to get you a very good product that will benefit you in the long run. Um, they, you know, also hopefully, hopefully uh, take care of any, any mistakes that could happen and nothing uh, will save you money in the long run because, you know, as Brian said, a lot, of, a lot of cities will say that they can't afford an engineer and 
sometimes we'd say, you can't afford not to have an engineer, because if something goes wrong, you don't want to be in that situation. They need, you need their help, and uh, that's, why, that's why they're around. Um, their construction documents and specifications they'll provide you with, those are the, a very critical piece, especially if you're hiring a contractor, that's, that establishes that working relationship, as many of you know, and they can help facilitate that. And the documents, they, you know, they go over them and review them from time to time, make sure that it's working well for us, that they have everything established, so the city has a good experience when working with them, so hopefully they'll be hired again in the future. And they can guide you through regulations and permitting processes, such as working with us, or um, other agencies or codes or things like that. And they have liability for what they do. You know, they don't, they're very careful and picky about what they sign off on because that's their livelihood and work that they're putting down with their name. It's not just a signature. Um, and, you know, they need to look at all the details. If any little thing goes wrong, it's, uh, it's a big deal in the engineering world. More so in structural, that's why I didn't go there. But. Uh, so, some general comments about plan review. Make sure your plan, once again, make sure your plans are submitted prior to design. Oftentimes we encourage, you know, submit them prior to bidding because you don't want change orders and we don't want you to make you have change orders, but sometimes we need to change the way the plans are based off of our rules. Um, and approval needs to take place before construction does. That's just part of the rules. If, if not, we s start sending you nasty letters and we don't like to do that and you don't like to get them. Um, if you're wondering anything about plan review, if it's required, um, what do we need for this? Like Brian said, we have a pretty, like to have open communication, call us, talk to us. We'll be glad to help you out however we can. Um, especially if, when it comes to treatment, as you know, Brian was discussing earlier, um, especially the uh, more specialized treatment options, we encourage that you come to us early on and talk to us about it prior to getting really heavily into the design, you know, especially if there's a well or um, underwater storage, whether that's backwash reclaim or clear well on site of the treatment plant you can get some offset issues that create uh, problems for us, and we like to get those handled on the front end. Uh, so for community public water supply for cities, we'll just uh, run in some, through some basics here, what needs to be submitted. We need plans, specifications, the plan review fee sheet, um, which I have, if anybody um, wants a little more information or wants that, I have copies of the fee sheet and the contact information for all the plan reviewers and uh, things like that up here. And so feel free to come, come up afterwards before you head off to lunch quick and we'll, I'll give that to you and you'll be set to contact us. Um, and the, obviously the fee that goes with the fee sheet uh, that funds our program. So for community, for a community, Public water supply, that's any city, municipality, people to contact are Brian Noma, who you just saw, myself, David Weam. We, we are the two guys for the Department of Health that uh, look over these things for the state of Minnesota. There's, um, and once again, I have that contact info up here for later. If it's funded through the Drinking Water Revolving Fund, that takes a little different course. Chad Kolstad will be the guy you talk with. Um, there's his contact info, and I have that up here on this piece of paper as well. Um, he's giving a presentation right now at the finance uh, track, I believe. And, but he's around. And a little bit about non-community in case anybody needs to know. Plan review is requ also required for non-community systems um, for treatment, water storage facilities, or the service line between the well and the um, if it's either treatment or a pressure tank or anything like that. And the contact for that is Krishna Mohan. And uh, 
getting to the end here, the plumbing. If you have anything that's plumbing, if it's just a water service line, if it's just a plumbing thing, we don't look at that. That would be the Department of Labor and Industry. If you have questions about, you know, is this you, is this DLI, contact us. Um, I also have a, the website for DLI's plumbing plan review group on here, and many of you may work with uh, one of their delegated authorities where a city will do their own plumbing plan review. And uh, finally to wrap up here, I mean we covered types of systems, a little bit about plan review, when engineers need to be involved, um, what benefits they give you, and uh, covered a little bit more about plan review and those generalities. And does anybody have any questions for me before we get you off to lunch a little early? Anything at all for David? <coughs> no questions? Hey, on occasion it comes up that uh, they build uh, a building, uh, typically maintenance you know, requires plan review. Uh, but in the same situation where they want fire protection, if they're just having a half a block of fire protection, no one has to die. Could that be Could you say that? I, I didn't quite catch all that. I'm sorry. Uh, on occasion, on occasion, people will ask if uh, uh, an industry comes to town and they're going to make a special line for fire protection, let's say six inch. We would normally consider that mean they'd have to do for plan review. But if it's only a service line going up to them only, would they have to put that to plan review? Um, that depends. You can give us a call about situations like that. If they're going to be putting like fire hydrants and stuff all, all along the property, uh, sometimes we'll see where like a big box store will come in and they'll they'll loop in a big water main all along the property and have fire hydrants everywhere. We we'll look at those. Um, if it's just you know if it's just a bigger service line that just goes straight from the main to the property and hooks up, um, generally that's not something we need to look at. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. The other thing that comes up on occasion, they'll have an issue where they got a four inch cast uh, and you have a number of breaks on it. Uh, in order to have fire hydrants, you gotta go six inch. So we say, you know, you, you can do those small projects, but you can't, you have to stay with the physical structure you had before. <coughs> you do not change anything. Would we allow that? Would we allow? Uh, going for, they have to put in six inches in order to have a fire hydrant on it. Let's say they have a, a small section of, of main that they want to replace because they have frequent flakes on it. Would that go, have to go through plan review? Yes, it would. Yeah, anytime you're replacing um, a significant amount, generally we've looked at if it's, if you're getting to the border of about 100 feet of replace, you know, if you're just repairing a patch, you're not going to need to hire an engineer and, and go through plan review and get that to us. But if you're, you know, replacing a main as a project, um, generally, we say once you're getting over 100 feet or adding, you know, a few hydrants, that's that's when you need to send it into us. 100 feet is the magic number, then, for the most part. For the most part, I mean, sometimes we get calls and it's like, well, this is what we're doing, um, and then we're like, okay, I'm not quite sure. Could you send me a PDF or something just through email, quick, so I can just get a rough idea of what's going on, and then we'll look that over and kind of make our determination from there. So it's not 200 feet, it's not 300 feet, it's not 500 feet no. under the cover of darkness? Okay. Any other questions? Let's give David a round of applause. We have lunch. Thank you.